Good morning. Welcome. I think you can be seated, right? I don't think we have to stand. Um, it is fabulous to see everyone here and to see the campus springing to life before our very eyes. I want to welcome new members of the faculty. We are so glad you've joined this community. Um, returning faculty, it's always terrific to see you after an always too short summer. Where does it all go so fast? But I am really most thrilled today to see our new Dean of Faculty, Malcolm Hill, sitting here among us in the front row. Malcolm, a distinguished biologist, comes to Bates from the University of Richmond. He and his family arrived in Lewiston in July, and he has plunged in to get to know the college, the academic program, and most important, faculty colleagues. You will all see when you spend time with him that Mal Malcolm approaches his work with energy and optimism, and these are wonderfully contagious qualities. So please join me once again in welcoming Malcolm to the Bates community. <laughs> Staff who are sprinkled throughout here and whose handiwork we're all benefiting from, I cannot thank you adequately for all the work you've put in once again to get us ready for the opening of the year. And this year I want to give a particular shout out to our planning and facilities staffs who have undertaken un, an unusual amount of construction in the brief window of summer to make the campus ever more functional and beautiful, including this wonderful new stage, which isn't quite complete, but it's fantastic. It's going to be great. And of course, I want to offer a special welcome to the members of the class of 2022. I, I hope you've had a good first week of orientation, ASOP, and for some, preseason practice. And my guess is by now, you are on overload and ready for college to start for real. So we will get there soon, I promise. Convocation marks the formal induction of your class into the Bates community and into the community of scholars. And it serves as a kind of bookend to commencement four years later. Indeed. Make a note of this morning because it is the only time other than when you're together in May of 2022 that you will come together as a full class. Let me give you all a sense of how the, this ceremony will proceed. After just a few words from me, you will be welcomed by your student government president, um, Walter Washington. Following Walter, we will have the convocation address delivered by Associate Professor of History, Joseph Hall. Finally, at the end of the ceremony, Brittany Longsdorf, our multi-faith chaplain, will lead us in a benediction, after which we will process out as we processed in, led by the mace bearer, Michael Murray, and our faculty marshals. There will be, then be a brief tree planting ceremony honoring those members of our community who died during this past year. Before I turn to my own brief remarks, I would like to introduce our speakers today. Walter Washington is a senior from Fleetwood, New York. He is a politics major, a football player, and a member of the Deansman, one of Bates' fabulous a cappella groups. He is also an outstanding leader on this campus. He is Bates' student government president, having been elected for the second year in a row. I'm thinking it might have been rigged. Um, but, and he is a terrific advocate for student interests. Our second speaker is Associate Professor of History, Joseph Hall. Beginning last year, we revived an earlier convocation tradition of asking the outgoing senior class to choose a professor to speak to the incoming first years at convocation. In effect, Professor Hall is a gift from the class of 2018 to the class of 2022. They chose brilliantly. Professor Hall has been a member of the Bates faculty since 2002. 
He teaches colonial American Indian and environmental history, and his current research focuses on the history of Wabanaki's Maine's indigenous peoples. His students praise him for his energy and enthusiasm. He has been known to show up to his classes in costume and to speak with various accents. Around campus, he is perhaps most famous for riding his bike in all weather, and on foot, he consistently finishes at the head of the pack in the annual Campus 5K race. Joe has won the Kreps Award for Excellence in Teaching, the Harvard Center Faculty Award for Outstanding Community Engaged Work, and the Phillips Faculty Fellowship. Before I turn the podium over to Walter and then Joe, I'd like to say a few words to the entering class. The arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends towards justice. I'm sure that many of you have heard this statement before. It was made famous by the Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. And President Obama liked the quotation so much that he had it woven into a rug in the Oval Office. As it happens, King was not the first person to express this sentiment. He simply adapted it with attribution from a 19th century Unitarian minister, Theodore Parker, who included it in a book of 10 sermons published in 1853. Parker, like Bates' founders in the same historical moment, was an abolitionist deeply involved in the social and political issues of his day. I've been thinking about this statement a lot lately because it expresses a thought that I once found reassuring. But now it feels dangerously like false hope, cold comfort, or a seriously misplaced sense of inevitability. Is the arc of the moral universe really bending toward justice in Syria, in Venezuela, in Myanmar, in our schools, on our city streets, at our borders, in our public discourse. Of course, the statement was never meant to describe conditions on the ground at any given time or place. It was meant as a spiritual, not a political truth, an affirmation of hope in the face of contrary experience. But I also hear it as a call to action, as did President Obama, who said that if the arc is going to bend toward justice, it's not gonna do it on its own. We have to get in there and use our best efforts to bend it. Otherwise, it's a little like expecting a fix for climate change somewhere off there in the future without changing our own behavior in the here and now. Students, you may be wondering what this has to do with your college experience. The short answer is everything. It has everything to do with how each of you shapes your individual path through Bates, and in so doing, how we together shape this community. If we want you to graduate in four years both prepared and motivated to do your part to make the world a better and more just place, what are the experiences you need to have here to get you there? The answers will be different for each of you, and this is important. But the project, figuring out who you are and how you'll make a difference in the world, is the same for all of us. And it binds us together as a community with a set of shared purposes and values. These shared values are most explicitly captured in our mission statement, of which I would like to highlight a single sentence. With ardor and devotion, we engage the transformative power of our differences, cultivating intellectual discovery and informed civic action. Notice that the project begins not with the head, not with intellectual discovery, but with hard work and an explicit call to open ourselves to being transformed by engaging with difference intellectual discovery and informed civic action unfold out of a prior commitment to what I will call empathy. Empathy is not, as we often think of it, simply a willingness to identify with the feelings of another person. In a recent piece focused on the importance of art in our public life, writer Dave Eggers describes it as a powerful and necessary force. With art comes empathy, 
It allows us to look through someone else's eyes and know their strivings and struggles. It expands the moral imagination and makes it impossible to accept the dehumanization of others. When we are without art, we are a diminished people, myopic, unlearned, and cruel. Of course, it is not just art that teaches empathy. Empathy is about approaching ideas, people, or situations with a stance of curiosity and fundamental openness. It is a way of moving through the world. Writing more than a century and a half ago in 1850, again, the same decade in which Bates was founded, Nathaniel Hawthorne put it this way, and apologies in advance for the gendered language. Hawthorne, it contributes greatly toward it, towards a man's moral and intellectual health to be brought into habits of companionship with individuals unlike himself, who care little for his pursuits and whose sphere and abilities he must go out of himself to appreciate. Here is my message to you. As you begin classes tomorrow and continue to get to know your fellow students, I urge you to go out of yourselves to appreciate new ideas, new people, new experiences, and new points of view. Treat your four years at Bates not as a structure set out by us for acquiring competence, but as an adventure driven by you, focused on seeking challenge. To make the most of your time here, each of you will need to figure out which questions compel you most deeply which modes of inquiry stimulate your curiosity and begin to feel intuitive, and which forms of expression engage your creativity and help you shape your own unique worldview. Paradoxically, this journey of self-discovery only works if you're willing at every turn to get outside yourself, to engage with difference, and much more important, to be prepared to be transformed by this act. As Eggers suggests, moving through the world with empathy makes it impossible to accept the dehumanization of others. In short, this way of seeing, feeling, imagining, and acting will give you the insight and capacity to begin to do, the, do your part while you're here to bend the arc. It will be up to you over your lifetimes to decide if and how you will continue to take up this challenge. Thank you. Now, thanks. <laughs>